Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Welcome to all of you to this year's convention, and uh, I hope that you all enjoy your time. And as you heard that the idea is to have a good time, to have a retreat, a special time with God, that you spend alone, to think about where your life is going, to make sure that you are going in the right direction, spiritually speaking, because the world may get us too busy to have time to sit alone and meditate about our life, but this will be a good chance for you to spend some time alone to review your life and where it is heading. And uh, also, um, it will be a perfect chance for confession. We have many blessed fathers attending this retreat. You're all loving fathers, and they love you so much, and they came especially to spend time with you. So I hope that all of you will have a chance to confess so that when you go back, you will feel that you are starting a new page in your spiritual life and head strongly in the, in the right direction with the Lord. Also, as I'm going to be talking to you about St. Mary the Obedient, we expect you to follow the instructions you were given a few minutes ago. <clears throat> These instructions are for your own benefit, and if you follow them, you will be the ones to gain. So, I think I'm going to start now um, the first lecture. All the lectures this year will be about the Blessed Virgin Mary, about her life, and about certain aspects about her life. And the reason why this topic was picked, because we want you to begin to think of the saints as role models and examples in your life. So we'll begin with a very brief introduction. Saints as our example in our spiritual life. Why is this important? Because we don't just learn about the life of saints just for the sake of knowing their story. But the idea is to learn from their life. The Lord Jesus said, if you say that you are the children of Abraham, then you must do the things that Abraham did. We cannot just say that we are children of Abraham unless we do the same deeds as he did or to live the same life that he lived. Okay? So it's very important that as we study the lives of the saints, number one, to learn lessons from their life for our spiritual benefit. So the first verse I'm going to read to you is taken from the epistle of St. Paul to St. Timothy, chapter 4, verse 12. Let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, etc. So the saints are examples. St. Timothy was a young bishop. That's why St. Paul is saying to him, let no one despise your youth. He was a young bishop. Also, St. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 1, imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. So he's calling us to imitate him, cons to consider him as an example to follow, just as he himself follows the Lord Jesus Christ. The second reason why we want to know about the saints is because we want to know how they became saints. If we want to become saints, then you, have, you, you need to know what did they do? How did they become saints? That's why we learn from their story. Number three, 
to follow after their footsteps. And we read this in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 7. Remember those who rule over you, who have spoken the word of God to you, whose faith follow, considering the outcome of their conduct. Whose faith follow. In the book of Songs, Song of Songs, it tells us also to follow after the footsteps of the saints. Song of Songs, chapter 1, verse 8. If you do not know, O fairest among women, follow in the footsteps of the flock and feed your little goats beside the shepherd's tents. Follow in the footsteps of the flock. Again, let me read this verse to you. If you do not know, O fairest among women, follow in the footsteps of the flock. You know, in our Christian life, you need to learn that we don't teach anything new. Right? We just reiterate what the fathers before us have said. Because they thought there's only one teacher in the church. Who is that? The Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only teacher. But we, what we do is we explain his teachings to the people. So we are his disciples in, this, in the way or in the sense that we, we tell you what he taught. But we don't come up with our own teachings, right? So the teaching is one in the church. And we only follow that teaching. Therefore, the Orthodox person recognizes if the teaching is not the teaching of Christ. Have you ever so heard someone, he says, this, is, this teacher is, 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 or this preacher is not really Orthodox, right? Have you heard this expression before? How do we know that he is not Orthodox? He's coming with new teaching that was not heard before. It is a strange teaching. Because the teaching is one. And what we do is that we follow the footsteps of the ones who were before us. That's what we need to do in our Christian life. Is to follow the footsteps of the saints. Okay? Therefore, we read the stories of the saints in order to learn from their example and follow after their footsteps. Number four... <coughs> To know about how God dealt with them. To learn about God himself. Because God is the same. God does not change. He is the same God. The way he dealt with the saints before us is the way he will deal with us today and tomorrow as well. Finally, to learn that the saints were not superhuman beings. They were normal human beings just like any one of us. But they loved God so much. Therefore, it is possible for us to become saints. We just need to learn from them and find out how they did it and to follow their example. In James 5, 17, Elijah was a man with a nature like, uh, like ours. And he prayed earnestly that it would not rain and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. But the part I want to focus on is Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. Elijah was not a superhuman being. He was a man with a nature like ours. All the saints have a nature like ours. So what can we learn from the Blessed Virgin Mary? Certainly so many things. So... The Virgin Mary as an example, not to speak yet about her obedience in particular, but let's first see what we can learn from her life. We can learn a lot from the life of the Blessed Virgin Mary. We learn from her silence as well as we learn from her words. Do you know how many times that the Virgin Mary spoke in the Bible? Hmm? Six times. Only six times. The Virgin Mary 
was silent most of the time. But whenever she spoke, she spoke very nice words. And she was very wise in every word that she said. We learn from her silence, but we also learn from her few words that she uttered. We learn from her submission and faith. We also learn from her service. We also learn from her humility. We learn from her praise. Every time in the Bible that the Virgin Mary spoke, it was only one verse. But the only time that she spoke a lot was when she praised the Lord, 10 verses. Hmm? That's, that's, this shows you that she was full of praise. So she speaks few words, but whenever she spoke a lot, it was praising, in praising God. We learn from her intercession as a mother that loves her children, and we learn from her obedience. And this is what we are going to talk mainly about now. Let's talk about the Virgin Mary, the obedient. When she was in the temple, she was very obedient, and everyone in the temple loved her. She went to the temple when she was three years old and stayed there until she was 12. And they were very upset when she had to leave, but she had to leave when she was 12 years old. The Lord was waiting for thousands of years for the Virgin Mary to be born. Why? Number one, he was waiting for that humble person that can bear the honor of being the mother of God and does not lose her humility. You know, sometimes if you get a good grade, you want to tell the whole world, look how smart I am, right? And it's only by getting a good grade. Or if you a uh, valedictorian or, or, or you have any kind of honor in this world, right? We want to tell everyone, look how smart I am, right? So imagine being the mother of God. Imagine being the one to bear the creator of this world. This needs a lot of humility, doesn't it? So God was waiting for that human being to be born, that she can bear that honor of being the mother of God. Number two, God waited for so long that this person will be born that can believe in the fulfillment of what God had promised. And it's not easy to believe, by the way, because it didn't happen in the past. It never happened and it will never happen again that a virgin becomes or be found with a child, right? And that's why in the prophecy of Isaiah, it says that the Lord himself will give you a sign. And that sign was that a virgin would bear a son. And notice that she will stay a virgin even after the birth of the Lord. So she believed in something that is virtually impossible according to the human understanding. But her faith was very high. The third reason, the Lord was waiting for the virgin to be born who will live a life of submission and obedience to the Lord because God changed her plan, didn't he? When the angel came to her, she said, how can this be since I do not know a man? And in the Bible expression, I do not know a man means that I have no intention to be married and have children, just like any normal girl her age. How can this be since I do not know a man? And when the angel explained to her, what did she say? 
Behold, I am the maid servant of the Lord. Let it be according to your word. It's a life of submission. It's a life of obedience. Lord, even if you want to change the course of my life, thy will be done. How did St. Mary become an obedient person? Definitely her early life in the temple prepared her for that great mission for which God has appointed her. And this shows us all the importance of coming to church and spending a lot of time in church. But when we come to church, we need to have this heart, a willing heart to learn and to obey the will of God. I remember the great Saint Anthony. He came to church with an open heart to listen to God's word in his life and God's will in his life. You know, sometimes we say, I just wish God would tell me what he wants me to do, right? And I will do it right away. What did St. Anthony do? God did not send him an angel to tell him, but he came to church like we all do, and he listened to the gospel. If you want to be perfect, sell everything that you have. Give it to the poor and you will have treasures in heaven and come and follow me. He did exactly as the Lord commanded him. Why? Because his heart was ready. He was willing to listen to the message of God. Therefore, when we come to church, let us open our hearts to listen to what God wants from us. We say that the Virgin Mary is blessed not only because she is the mother of God, but she's even more blessed because she is obedient to God. And this is what the Lord declared in the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 11, verse 27 and 28. And it happened as he spoke these things that a certain woman from the crowd raised her voice and said to him, Blessed is the woman, blessed is the, the womb that bore you and the breasts which nursed you. But he said, More than that, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. So why is the virgin blessed? She is of course blessed because she became the mother of God, she bore the Son of God. But she's even more blessed, as the Lord says here, more than that, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. And we know that there is no one that kept the word of God than Saint Mary, as we read in the Gospel according to Saint Luke, chapter 2, verse 19. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. So she really kept the word of God in her heart. That's why the Blessed Virgin Mary is blessed. And obedience to God means to do His will. As we say in the Lord's Prayer, the prayer which He taught us, Thy will be done. Matthew seven twenty one. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. So, obeying God means to do His will, to do what He wants from us. And we will know shortly how to know what God wants from us. In the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 12, beginning with verse 46. While he was still talking to the multitudes, behold, his mother and brother stood outside seeking to speak with him. Then one said to him, Look, your mother and your brothers are standing outside seeking to speak with you. But he answered and said to
to one to the one who told him who is my mother and who are my brothers and he stretched out his hand toward the disciples and said here are my mother and my brothers for whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother how can we become the Lord's brothers or sisters by obeying God by doing his will from her own experience we finished that already from her own experience because she was an obedient servant of the Lord and she knew the blessedness of being obedient she's teaching us to be obedient to the Lord and we learn this from the miracle of changing the water into why what did she say John 2 verse 5 his mother said to the servants whatever he says to you do it and this is the only time in the whole entire Bible that the Virgin Mary gives us a command this is the only time she said to us to do something whatever hmm, he says to you do it can we learn that can we say it whatever he says to you do it whatever he says to you do it I like the word whatever what does whatever mean it means to obey him without questioning some people argue when they are told to do something they argue but here whatever he tells you do it do not question to obey him even if we do not understand now the Lord said to Saint Peter something to this end 13 verse 8 Jesus answered and said to him what I am doing you do not understand now but you will know after this do you trust the Lord do you feel that you can obey him and listen to him now and later you will understand or do you say no I need to understand now before I obey right sometimes we want to do that explain to me why you say that I can't obey you I can't listen to you I have to understand first but here the Lord is saying what I am doing you do not understand now but you will know after this so to obey without questioning to obey without understanding to obey him with full trust with full trust And as we say in the spiritual song that you say, He will lead me and I will follow. Lord, you just lead the way and I will follow. I remember our father Abraham in Genesis chapter 12 what did the Lord say to our father Abraham now the Lord had said to Abraham get out of your country from your family from your from your father's house to a land that I will show you imagine can you leave home without knowing where you're going to a land that I will show you to that extent our father Abraham obeyed God and when God wanted to test him and to see how much he obeys him he said to him offer to me your only son whom you love 
And our father Abraham rose early to offer his only son. This is the life of obedience. And St. Paul explains that our father Abraham could do that because he had faith that the Lord could raise him even after he had offered him. So if you have faith in the Lord, you can obey him. We can say, I will follow him because he is my creator. I follow him because I know he loves me. And I follow him because I know that he created me because he loved me. His Holiness Pope Shenouda says, God loved us when we were still a thought in his mind and a desire in his heart. Even before he created us. Just by thinking that one day I will create human beings, this gave pleasure to the heart of God. He created us out of his love and he loved us before he created us. Just if you have, for example, your parents when they got married, just the fact that they will have children gave them pleasure to, his, to their heart. Even before you were born, and that's why before you were born, they prepared everything for you. They get the little bed and, uh, you know, some of the baby's clothes and everything. And they are so happy to do that because they are expecting a baby, right? It gave them joy. So God, even before he created us, he loved us. And he prepared everything for us before he created us. So we follow him because we know he loved us. And he loved us. That's why he created us. That's why we are ready to follow him. And even after we fell, God saved us because he is our redeemer and our savior. Therefore, we will follow him because he cares about our salvation. Satan does not love us. Satan does not care about our salvation. God does. Therefore, we will follow the Lord because he is our creator and because he is our savior. And we will follow him also because he is the good shepherd. And what does the good shepherd do? Let us read a few verses from Psalm 23. It's called the Psalm of the Shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. We shall never want when we are following the Lord. We will only want when we are away from him. Do you remember the lost son when he was away from his father's house? He became in a situation in which he began to want. And he became hungry and didn't even find anyone to feed him. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. The table here is the table of the Lord, which is the Holy Communion. You anoint me, you anoint my head with oil. This is the Mayrun oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Alleluia. I will follow him because he is my good shepherd. Someone may ask, but how can I listen to the voice of God in my life. The first way is to read the Bible because this is the word of God. When we read the Bible, we know his will. Just like Saint Anthony heard the voice of God when he heard the Bible being read. We also hear the voice of God through the priest. And we also hear the voice of God through our parents and through those who really care about us. 
I remember a saying for St. John Chrysostom. He said, if you find people telling you off in your life, love them and consider them as your physicians who God has put in your life to direct you in the right path. We often don't like people who say to us, you are doing something wrong, right? We want just everyone to say how wonderful we are and pat our shoulders and tell us that we are such great people. But we should really love those who say to us, you are doing something wrong. Don't do this, it is wrong, it's not good for your life. Because they are showing us the right way. The parents, for example, sometimes we are very upset with our parents because they direct us and we feel that they are controlling our life. This is not true. It is because of their love and their care. It is their responsibility to show us, to show us the right way. Therefore, let us love every person who directs us in the right path. I want to read to you a verse from 1st Peter, chapter 1, verses 14. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lusts, as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in your conduct, because it is written, be holy, for I am holy. Obedience to God will lead us to a life of holiness in the Lord. And this is what we're called for, to be holy. The last thing I want to talk to you about is the greatness of obedience. The greatness of obedience. St. Paul tells us that the Son himself, the Son of God, became obedient, thereby fulfilling redemption. So we read in Hebrews 5, 8, Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. And in Romans chapter 5, verse 19. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, that is Adam. By one man's disobedience, who is Adam, many were made sinners. So also by one man's obedience, who is the Lord Jesus Christ, many will be made righteous. And in Philippians 2, 8, And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Who can tell me the name of a saint that is very famous for obedience? San John, what do we call him? San John Picolobos. Picolobos, yani, Saint John, we call him St. John, Yohanna al Qasir. He was short, but he was very famous for his obedience. And notice that his obedience was absolute. So there, is, there are two, fam two famous stories about uh, St. John. And by the way, the tree of obedience was still alive until the beginning of last century, okay? But now the, mo the whole monastery is under the sand. They are trying to excavate it. But the story of that tree was that it was a dead stick. And then St. John's teacher was telling him, go and draw water from very far away and water the, that dead stick. And after a while, the red stick started to bud. 
and to, pr to produce green leaves. And then he said, behold, the tree of obedience. Also, your life will be like that tree if you are spiritually dead, if you become obedient to the Lord and to your father of confession, then that God will change that death into life and you will, your life will become like the tree of obedience, full of green and full of fruit. It's all because of obedience. And another time he told him to go and catch a hyena. Do you know the hyena? <laughs> Very dangerous animal. So he went to search for a hyena and when he found one, he said, my teacher is, has, has ordered me to bring you. So you have to come and follow me. And then he grabbed the hyena. And when the teacher saw that, he didn't want him to be proud of himself. So he said to him, I tell you to get me a hyena, you get me a dog. So he let it loose. Another time they wanted to know whether he's truly humble or not. So they slapped him on the face and they said to him, tell us how you felt about that. He didn't even remember. He was a truly humble man. He, was, he had great grace and gift from God. But I want to say that because he was a humble man, an obedient man, God did miracles in his life. This teaches us the importance of being obedient. And that is why we say blessings will rest upon the children of obedience. The blessings of the Lord rest upon those who obey. One of the fathers said, or one of the fathers was asked, what is the greatest virtue of all? He said, obedience. And when he was asked why, he said, because in obedience, the person does not do his or her own will, but the will of someone else. So it is to cut off my own will, to have no will in other words. I'm just obeying someone else's directions. And of course, not just anybody, but people who will show me the way of God. Because as we will see now, that obedience is to the Lord and in the Lord. We don't just obey every person. Because we must obey God more than we obey people. Notice that we are slaves to those whom we obey. In Romans 6, 16, do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one's slaves whom you obey, whether, to, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness? Who do we obey in our life? Do we obey sin leading to death or we obey God leading to righteousness? This is a choice that we have to make. Therefore, obedience is to God. And any person whom we obey, should we should obey him or her in the Lord because we should never obey anyone who teaches us anything contrary to what God teaches. So in the book of Acts 5.29, St. Peter says, But Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. Very important. We need to obey God. Not our friends who lead us astray. Not anyone who lead us in the wrong direction. Very important to obey God. Also, we obey the parents. We read about the obedience of the parents in Ephesians 6, 1. And the parents are responsible for us before God. They are responsible for, for us. They teach us 
and they direct us because they, it is their responsibility. We have to obey them. They have, this is their job, is to direct us. Okay? So, in Ephesians 6, chapter, chapter 6, verse 1, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. See how he says, in the Lord, which means if your parents tell you to do something against the Lord, you may not obey them. But as long as they teach you to do something in the Lord, according to the commandments of the Lord, therefore we must obey the parents. Children, obey, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. In Colossians 3.20, Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing to the Lord. And then he gives the commandments to the parents. Fathers, do not provoke your children lest they become discouraged. But here, children, obey your parents in all things. If we combine both verses, children, obey your parents in all things in the Lord. So you obey them in all things in the Lord. Also, we have the obedience of the fathers of the priests, as it's written in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17. Obey those who rule over you, and be submissive, for they watch out for your souls as those who must give account. Let them do not do so with joy, and not with grief, for that would be unpro unprofitable for you. Therefore, we hear the voice of God in the Bible through the priests, through the parents, through those who truly love you. If you really care about your salvation, listen to the voice of God in your life. This is what I wanted to tell you about the life of obedience. It is truly a beautiful life. It is truly a worry-free life. You know why? Because if you obey, then you know you are going in the right direction. But if you begin to say, this is my life, I want to make my own choices, how do you know that you are doing the right choices? The Bible teaches us, lean not on your own understanding. God has put order in this life. Okay? So, in the church, for example, there is the, His Holiness the Pope. The bishops obey the Pope. Why? He is the father of the church. Okay? And then the bishops, the priests, obey the bishop. The deacons and the congregation obey the priest. So this, this, there's this order in the church, and th there's only one teacher, the teaching is one. And if we follow this system, we are sure that we are following the right direction. But once everyone begins to want to do things the way he or she wants, then this is, becomes chaos, and there's, there will be no order. Let us learn from the Virgin Mary, the obedient. Let us learn the life of obedience. And the blessings of the Lord will always rest upon the children of obedience.